Okay. Itong uh, segment na ito ano, ay ipapakita ko sa inyo na mula pala sa tatay hanggang sa anak. Okay? The Father Marcos and the Son Marcos ay doon na pala ang umpisa ng pahirap no, sa bansa natin. This is the Southeast Asia region. This Asian region consists of 11 countries. Here you can find a country that is considered one of the richest in the world and that is Singapore. But in this same region, you can also find countries that are below the poverty line and still labeled as poor countries. And one of these poor countries is the Philippines. Mm. A long time ago, the Philippines was richer than Singapore. Though it was still poor way back then, this country had the potential to be one of the richest. And believe me when I say that the Philippines should be as rich a country as Singapore today. But what happened? Why what happened? does the Philippines remain poor? What are the real reasons why this nation cannot overcome poverty? Why is Singapore rich compared to the Philippines if they had no, the it... same potential to begin with? There was a time when the Philippine peso was almost equal to the US dollar. As of today, one US dollar is equivalent to 55 to 56 Philippine pesos. But did you know that almost 60 years ago, around the presidency of Diosdado Macapagal, the exchange rate of peso to dollar was 2 to 1. It means that two Philippine pesos were equal to one US dollar. But how does it matter though? Well, you see. Okay, so nakita niyo ah, hindi pala totoo na pano ni Marcos yung Uh, halos magkapares yung US dollars at peso nagumpisa pa pala ito kay Dios dado makapagal The US dollar is the world currency meaning this currency is the standard when you want to get the true value of every currency in the world So if your currency is nearly equal to the US dollar it only means that it is almost as valuable as the US dollar itself and that was the Philippine peso way back then but that was short lived during the Marcos regime Its value sank from 2 pesos to 3.7 pesos against the dollar. And since then, the value of the peso has never recovered to its original. Okay. So, it sinks from 2 to 3.7. Remember, Dios dado makapagal. Okay, nag-start ng 2 uh, pesos is to 1 dollar. Tapos, nung ito na, kung nung kay, uh, kay Marcos na, naging 3.7. Okay. Value. So today, it reached 56 pesos Grabe. per dollar. The Philippine currency gradually losing its value against the US dollar is a clear indication that this country is not progressing. The way to measure a country's wealth is by its GDP per capita. Grabe. The higher the GDP per capita, the richer the country. Masana And Singapore tayo. is the richest country not only in Southeast Asia, but in the whole of Asia for having the highest GDP per capita. which is around $91,000. Well, the GDP the per capita of this country is only around $4,017. Yikes. It is way too low compared to Singapore's uh. $91,000. Okay, I guess Singapore is too much to use as a comparison. So let's compare the Philippines to its neighboring countries. Indonesia has $5,051 GDP per capita, hmm. while Thailand has $7,073 GDP Baba per capita. These three countries are all almost the same. Their economy relies on their natural resources. Their geographies natural are resources. almost the same, since they all have the same access to the ocean. But why is the Philippines left behind? Why Yikes. is it that, even with the abundance of natural resources, the Philippines still poor after so many years? Now to help us understand more about the situation in the Philippines, let's again compare it to Singapore. The Philippines and Singapore are both victims of colonialism. Both countries suffered a lot from colonial rule. Singapore has been colonized by the British Empire for many years. On the other hand, the Philippines has also been colonized by different nations or empires. There is no denying that even after these countries became independent, they could hardly recover from the damage and losses of colonization. Ay, nasa na colonized by countries, ano? Uh, so, ibig sabihin, back to zero sila lahat. Meaning both Singapore and the Philippines started from the lowest poverty line. Both countries strive to progress. And of course, both countries want to progress. But the problem is that they got different results. From the very beginning, Singapore was fortunate to have its first genuine leader to serve its people and nation. 
Well, of course, I'm not saying that Manuel Rojas was not a good leader, but he and other presidents of the Philippines failed to accomplish Yikes. as much as Lee Kuan Yew had accomplished. <laughs> and I'm talking about destroying the corruption. The first thing that corruption. Lee Kuan Yew did was to make sure that there would be no corruption in his administration. He definitely made sure that every public servant of the country, from the lowest to the highest position, was not corrupt. But then again, the corruption rate was not zero in Singapore during his term, but it was very low, not only in the Asia, but in all countries in the world. What he did was he founded the CPIB, or the Corrupt Practices Investigation Bureau, and the sole purpose of this agency is to fight corruption. And it was really a... Naman ginawa, uh, ano, PCGG ang Pilipinas, kaya lang napapaloob din doon sa loob anti-corruption sila pero corrupt din naman sila <laughs> they combated corruption not Kasi only kung uh, billion billion yung nabawi mula sa nakaw na yaman ng mga Marcos saan napunta yung mga yun di ba na feel ba natin yung na sequester nila yun ang tanong in the public yun. sector but in the private sector as well on the contrary the corruption rate in the Philippines keeps surging as a matter of fact, Ayan, in 2023, is. the Philippines ranked as the 115th least corrupt nation out of 180 countries. Meaning, this country is one of those countries where corruption is rampant. Mm. The second corruption. key to Singapore's success is its meritocratic system. This system was also established during the Lee Kuan Yew administration. Meritocratic. The idea of this system is simple, yet very effective. They will only select leaders or government officials based on their merits. Mm -hmm. You cannot run for the candidacy as a government official if your background is not, not excellent. Only those people with a good educational background and a clean life record can mm -hmm. become the public servants of Singapore. But again, in the Philippines, <laughs> anyone can run from the lowest to the highest position in their government. Well, it was just quite normal though. For a democratic country, right? Anyone can have the right to become the leader of the country. But that is the main issue here. Because the Philippines has no meritocratic system, anyone yeah. can run for a spot in the government. Anyone. Even those people who do not finish their <laughs> education can run. Even if you don't have credibility, you can run. Even if you already have a record of corruption, you Ayun. can still run. Ayun ang pinagkaiba eh. Gaya din ang sabi ng boss ko, sabi niya, how come? You people still vote this, Marcos? Sabina, don't you know your history? <laughs> then it is not a problem if they run. But that is another main root of the Philippines' poverty because the majority of Filipinos keep voting you know? for unworthy public servants. The candidate who is a well-known celebrity <laughs> has the highest success rate in winning the election because the majority of people in this country keep voting for candidates who are famous instead of those who are actually deserving because of their excellent educational background. In other words, the majority of people are obsessed with putting celebrities in office. But that's not the worst. The worst thing is that they keep voting for the same person or the same family to become their public officials. Yes, I am talking about the political dynasties that have been happening in the Philippines for centuries. If you're going to review the history of the Philippines, you will notice that many powerful families have already been elected to office, Ayan. generation Ayan. by generation. Marcos tayo. Okay? So ngayon, gusto ko ipakita sa inyo yung sinabi niya kanina na uh, as early as uh, bago yung Marcos, eh, talagang maganda eh. Yung sinabi niya kanina na powerful yung Philippines dati. Mas mayaman tayo. Uh, among the Asian countries, tayong pinakamayaman actually sa Asia. Okay? Kung hindi man pinaka, isa tayo sa pinakamayaman. Ngayon, kung ipapakita ko sa inyo ito, from this database, 1960, it started 1960 hanggang 2022, makikita natin yung uh, gradually na pagtaas at pagbaba ng ating bansa. Take note, ito yung Philippines. Ah. So, 1960, Ah, hindi pa president si Marcos dito kasi 1965 si Marcos, di ba? So 1960 hindi pa si Marcos ang president. Nakita ninyo na sa third ang ating uh, ano, fourth pala, fourth pala tayo when it comes to economy, GDP. Ayun. 
So, slowly by slowly, titingnan natin, ipiplay natin to ha. Ayan. Ayan. Tanggalin na lang natin yung music. Oh, kita natin, oh. So, 1962, ayan. Nasa fourth pa tayo dyan. Okay? Hindi pa si Marcos yung president dyan. 1963, ayan. Uh, 6.14 billion ng ating GDP. Okay, 64 o 65 si Marcos na. Ayan. Sige, syempre, yan yung after effect pa nung uh, previous uh, president. So, 1966. Okay. Nasa ano pa tayo? Nung mga unang, ano, sabi nga nila, nung mga una-unang uh, termino nitong si Marcos Sr. Okay, okay pa naman ni. Eh. Okay, 1967. Okay. 1968, nakita ninyo, nag-drop down tayo sa, ano, sa pangalan nito, sa 5th. Ayan, nasa 5th tayo ng 1968. Nakita ninyo, nasa, nangunguna ang Japan noong araw. Japan, uh, pangalaw yung China, and then India. Okay, continue natin. Nakita nyo yung mga ASEAN natin. ASEAN, o, oh, ayan, Indonesia, uh, Thailand, South Korea. Mas mayaman pa tayo sa South Korea noong araw. Eh no. Nasa 5th na tayo 1968. Okay? Okay, nine, Oh, wow. Wow, wow. What? What? 1970. Nasa 9 tayo bigla from 5 to 9, 1970. Oh. Okay, 1970. Okay, umakyat ng konti 1971, 1972, ano? Uh 10. Nasa 10 na tayo. Okay, nasa 10 na tayo. 1972. 73. Okay, 75. Okay, 75. 76. Okay, na rank number 10 na tayo. Wow, number 1 yung Japan. Okay, 9 ulit. 10 ulit. Okay, 11 na. 1979, nasa 11. 11. Okay. Bumalik ng 10, 1981. 82, 11 ulit. Okay, 83. Nasa 12. Nako, nasa 12 na tayo. 83. Okay. 80. 85. Nako, nasa 85. 1985. Nasa uh, 13 na tayo. 13 spot. Okay, 85, 86. Okay, 86. Bumalik sa 12. And then, tuloy-tuloy na yan. 87. Si Cory Aquino na yan. Tuloy-tuloy hanggang sa nawala. So, anong implication na yan? Noong 1960, bago si Marcos na upo, nasa rank number 4 tayo. Okay? And then, noong paumpisa na si Marcos, unti-unti na tayong pababa ng pababa. Okay, hanggang sa 1986 iniwanan niya tayo sa spot na ano, spot na uh, 12. Okay? And then nag-take over ang Cory Aquino administration, tuloy-tuloy na yan hanggang sa nawala. Tingnan niyo. Okay. Ayun, wala na. 88 88 Okay. 13, nasa 13, okay. Bumalik siya ng actually 10. Okay, 11 pala, 11. And then 12, 1992. Okay, panahon ni... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, 1991, si Aquino pa yan, Aquino. 92, pagpasok ni ano, ni Ramos. Okay, 93, si Ramos. Okay, ito kay Ramos na to, ating nanyo. Biglang pagkawala. Ayan, 93, nandyan pa. 94, okay, 94. Okay, 95, nandyan pa. Okay. 96. 97. 98. Ayan, 99. Ayan, kay Erap na to eh. Okay, hanggang sa, okay, kay Erap meron pa tayo sa top 15. Ayan, top 15 pa tayo kay Erap. Pagpasok na ni Arroyo, wala na. Ayan, ayan. Pagpasok na ni Arroyo, wala na. Hindi na ninyo makikita. So, nasa number one spot ang Japan. Okay, ang Pilipinas, nasa na? Oink, 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 oink. Tapag iwanan na. 2002, 
to sa 2003. Ayan, 2003. Wala na. Hindi na ninyo makita. Hindi na makita. Ayan, 2005. Ayan, panahon ni Arroyo. Hindi na ma makita. Ayan, yung China. Tingnan yung bumubulusok yung China. Tingnan nyo. 2006. Alright, 2006. Ayan, South Korea. Top 4 na. Saudi Arabia, top 5. Indonesia, top 6. Oh my God. Alright. Tingnan nyo, tinalo pa ng Indonesia ang Hong Kong SAR. Pero anyway, ang Indonesia kasi is, ano, kumbaga eh, mas malaki kasi yung population nila. Alright. So, continue, continue. 2008. Ayan. Okay. Alright. 2009. Okay, 2010, nakita nyo, nagpakita si Philippines. Which is ito na yung umpisa nung kay Pinoy. Tignan natin na, o oh, at least si Pinoy, ayan, kita natin. Ayan, Pinoy, ayan, Pinoy. 2011, andyan si Pinoy, nasa rank 14. At least, sabi nila, worse si Pinoy, di ba? Pero at least, naiangat ni Pinoy from... From nothing nung kay Arroyo. Na ibalik niya sa 14. Okay. Okay. Na ibalik niya sa ano? 13. Okay. Na ibalik niya sa 13. Okay. 2013 si Pinoy pa. Okay. 14. Ayan. Talagang nagstay siya doon sa top 15. Ha? Tignan niyo yung China number 1 na. Number 1 na yung China. Okay, top 15. O ba? Naiabot pa niya ng ano? Rank 11. Si... Pangalan nito. Si... Aquino. Ayan. Pero, papunta na siya sa rank 13. Okay, 13. 2016. Okay. Papasok na si Duterte dyan. Okay, papasok na si Duterte. Pumunta ng 14. 17. Nasa 14 siya. Nasa 15 pa rin. Okay, top 15, 18, bumalik sa 14, bumalik sa 13, saan 18, okay. 2019, okay, pumunta ng, oh, bumalik ng top 10. Okay, top 10. Ang problema, bumaba ulit yan kasi dumating yung pandemic. Tingnan nyo, ayan, 2019, uh, rank 10. Bumalik siya ng rank 10 nung 20, ayan, 2019. Okay, continue. Okay, 2019. Pero pagdating ng 2020, pumasok siya ng ano, rank 9, 9, 10. Ay, 10 pa rin pala. Okay, go ahead. 10 siya. Tapos, ayan, nawala na siya nung pandemic na. The middle of pandemic. Ah, nandyan pa naman siya. Nandyan pa rin naman siya ng uh, rank 10. 13, ay 12 pala, 12. Yan, 12, 2021, 20, 12, and then 22, nakita nyo 22? Ayan, nawala na, 22. Ayan na yung last, last na siya, ayan. 22. Ayan, yun na yun. So ngayon, dahil walang update sa 23 at 24, malamang wala na. Mission failed na ang Pilipinas. Kawawang Pilipinas. 